Hello, everybody. I'd like to welcome you at my presentation about the recent news in numerical scheduling. My name is Petr Holášek. I uh, work here in Brno office as software engineer in kind of sustaining team as Jetstream maintainer. And also my interests are recent news in uh, virtual memory and schedulers. I'd like to thank to Jirka Hladký for giving benchmark results. So, so I'd like to briefly introduce what NUMA is. Also, I'm sure that most of you know what's going on. What NUMA? It's non-uniform access ar architecture. It means that uh, there are a bunch of there are groups of processors, and every uh, and ev every group of processors has own memory bus and own memory, but can also access memory of other groups. I will describe it in to the details in next slide. Uh, Numa is nowadays it's supported by most of the modern operating operating systems. I mean, I mean uh, Linux, Windows. I think Open Solaris also has support and it's logical follower of u of uniform memory ac access architecture and mainly it's uh, heavily used in HPC world I mean HPC like high performance computing means people who, who runs very specific workloads and on some spe spe uh, machines with well-known top topology so they they know to which processor they want to pin task and what memory access patterns this task will do. So back to the uniform memory access, just introduction. It's based on a sym symmetrical multiprocessing. It means one bus and many processors. And prob main problem is that the that the memory bus is a kind of bottleneck because a lot, a lot of processors want to access memory and they are fighting for a bus. So there's bottleneck and performance decrease. Uh, Non-uniform memory access solves it. So by grouping uh, processors and assigning own memory bus to each of the group and each memory bus has connected some uh, piece of memory. It's called local memory to this node. So, for example, processor zero uh, belongs to NUMA node one. Uh, he can access to this uh, to this memory with, it, uh, with the lowest latency, so the fastest. But uh, CPU zero can also access uh, memory in node two, but there is a latency because it has to go through two buses and there is an interconnect between nodes. So latency is worse and it uh, raises some, some problems. But on the other hand, uh, we, c we can run uh, processors with much better parallelism because we can have some process pinned here on a CPU zero and CPU one, and they will access this memory, and it will be much faster uh, than if if there would be if there would be just one bus. So, the non-uniform access has also disadvantages. The the, the biggest disadvantage is that uh, latency of access to local memory and latency to the for the access to remote memory. Uh, according to our benchmark, uh, we, did, we, we run a lot of benchmark with the quality engineering folks and practically it's something like uh, twice time slower to access when, when we are accessing a remote node from processor belo belonging to other nodes. And problem is that uh, previous versions of kernel use uh, scheduling. Uh, previously, kernel wa wanted to 
when it is balanced over overload in a system. So when we uh, when we started a task with the two threads, Kernel uh, scheduled it like one task to CPU zero, and second task I mean task as a thread within process, just for clarify, and second task to CPU two. So they are maybe they they had memory allocated here, but the CPU two had a bigger latency than CPU zero. So there was some problem with performance then. Uh, now, nowadays, uh, non-uniform access is used still more and more, so kernel developers decided to solve these problems with a local memory access and, and remote and latency. So there was a lot of work during past two years. Uh, the first, the, the patch set, which is now in uh, car in uh, Upson kernel and also in uh, Rel 7 Gypsy kernel, was uh, sent for review in uh, Ox in uh, maybe in uh, September of 2013 and merged into mainline 3.12 in October. So it was sent by Mel Gorman, developer from Swiss, but the work was based on many, many people involved in development in, in the past years. But it, this thing is very, very complex and involves either virtual mem memory management and schedulers, so st uh, maybe it's still under development and under testing and uh, new fixes are, are still sent to the upstream. The, the feature which I will describe is is fully is fully autom automatic and requires just to power on Numa in BIOS when you have Numa machine, of course. So there is a some benchmark results how uh, previous previous kernel behaves uh, on a on a horizontal axis. There is a time of a benchmark of running benchmark on a vertical axis. There is an amount of memory, and every every node has different color, so we can see that it was made by perf benchmark that we allocated. Uh, we, we had one process with four threads, so uh, kernel sc scheduled it in round robin uh, style uh, to four nodes. So to every numa node, there was a one thread. But all of the threads uh, access the memory allocated on a node zero. We can see that. And even also, they, they all, of, all of threads accesses, access me, me, uh, memory on node zero. There was a still a problem because CPU, CPU zero had a good latency, but other, other CPUs didn't. So we can, uh, we can see that kernel attempted to migrate uh, memory to the other nodes a bit because uh, other nodes are getting some, some memory to the end, but it wasn't good, so they still had latency for, for access on to, to the node 2, other, other CPUs. So after that, and, and, and uh, with the, the, the new patch set, We can see how, how now how recent kernel can migrate memory towards the threads. So we can see that at the at the beginning there was there was maybe five gigabytes and one gigabyte on each other node, and and it correlates to the two gigabytes to every node. So we we divided uh, original eight gigabytes to the we distributed it among nodes according to thread activity and access patterns and so on. So at, at the end, all, all threads has his memory on its node and every CPU or all CPUs have good latency or the best possible probably, but it's just benchmark, it's not real life workload. There's another 
uh, output from set JDB is a Java benchmark. Uh, it consists from one, one process with many threads inside and it's, its metrics are BOPS, it means business operational operation uh, per second. It's some kind of simulation of trading system. So here you can see a result from rel 665. Uh, with, mo with more th and with more threads, the the difference is is bigger. So for two threads, it's not so it's not so big deal, but with six threads, uh, we measured around 40 percent of of gain of performance here. So it's also just benchmark, but it simulates real life workload. So I personally think it's quite good enha enhancement, 40%. So now I'd like to talk a bit about implementations and tricks included there. Every, every task uh, gets its preferred node. It means the, the node with the most access memory by this task. And ca then kernel, uh, attempts to move task towards its preferred node. So it has a code snippet. I don't know if it, it was a good, good idea to put kernel sources into slides, but uh, it should show that every, every task in kernel gets new uh, data it, it can carry. It's, it's, it's a field of faults at no nodes at other NUMA nodes. And uh, finally, when we have a lot enough data, kernel uh, sets preferred no uh, node and start trying to migrate a task to this node. So, but main question is how page accesses are tracked? How can, how can kernel know uh, which, which, which uh, no nodes we, we access? So the trick is that kernel periodically unmaps uh, maps pages of processes. So every uh, access to the page uh, trigger page fault. And then page fault are page fault are collected and we, we've got stat statistics uh, which node we, we access and we can cal calculate which node was mostly accessed and and so this one should be pre preferred node. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'd like to notice that not all types or pages are watched. Maybe read-only pages aren't, aren't watched and also exec executable pages aren't watched because uh, it's not so worth migrating them. Or, mi or also, also tasks aren't, aren't in, every, in average real life workload tasks uh, are don't access them so often, like some very intensive uh, pages with data. So yeah, there is a, I just, I noticed it's here one trick that the s ev ev because every physical page on a system has its own uh, struct page. And if we have a system with really a lot of memory, we have to still keep struct page as small as possible. So, uh, and but developers needed to implement uh, last accessing CPU and process into the stru struct page. So they did some kind of trick into Flex and it, it functioned out. So it's now, it's nice pr proof of concept, but in real life. So also mig mig memories can be migrated towards uh, threads or generally tasks. As I saw, as, as I sh shown in a benchmark result, the memory was, because threads were, was, were pinned to the nodes. So, uh, and when Kernel realized that, uh, he, sta he started to, to migrate memory towards the threads. In, 
in instead of migrating thread to, to, to the node. So also memory can be migrated. A kernel tried to do that even before, but with the fact that there are enhancements, it's it's good, much more much more effective than than previously. And yeah, there are more uh, more conditions for doing that. For example, skin stuff who can be migrated to another node because user use some kind of Luma CTL of or HVLog for skinning it hard. Yeah, the last concept in implementation I'd like to tell you about are Luma groups. Uh, it's group, uh, Luma groups are groups of tasks accessing the same shared page. So some pages of memory shared among uh, more processes. So kernel tries to group that into Luma groups and then shared page accesses are also taken in uh, into account when kernel decides which node will be preferred. And shared page are uh, yeah, shared page have uh, bigger pri priority because kernel attempts to group processes accessing the same uh, shared page, shared page to the same node because it's most effective way ho how to access them. So how, ca how can I tune it, th this enhancement in recent kernel or, or in uh, Sweet Rail 7? Uh, at first you can check if it should be uh, triggered on by default, but you can check it by getting of, of this file where uh, if there is no uh, Luma in this file, you can you can put it into that and this, this scheduler enhancement will be powered on. And if you want to power off it, it's possible because some people need to uh, handle skinning of, of tasks and migrating memory on their own. So don't and do, don't want to, to use this, this thing, so you can easily power it off. Yeah, there's a, quite, there's a quick summary about that. So task and, tasks and, uh, and memory are intensively migrated to each other to be in group and to have the lowest possible uh, me memory access latency and also n not to destroy uh, caches so much. Uh, you, can, you can say that performance gains are up to 40% when we when we comparing to the rel 65 on a four node sy system but we uh, we also tried eight node system and 16 node system and there wasn't so so big gain but it was all over the 20% and this feature will be included in rel 7 so worth buying it there are sources I use. There's a whole page set if you are interested in kernel source. There's a nice LVM article about this stuff. Uh, yeah, there's a link to the benchmark we use and there's a kernel org airship. So that's all. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Probably yes, for s maybe for some uh, d database application. Yeah, I, I repeat the question. If we uh, notice notice any or some uh, real real life use case, which when where it was worth performance after this enhancement. Yeah, yeah, I 
I didn't didn't see it, but I read about some data database application that there was some drop of performance, few few cents of percent. So users with this use case need to tune it by their own. So hey, good question. Any other question? They are they are debug input in a, a sysfs. I did I I didn't didn't want to not notice it here because it's quite beyond of this over overview presentation. But you can you can view I think a, num a number of page loads and you can tune uh, because kernel needs to unmap uh, pages periodically for for all processes. So you can tune a uh, peak of that un unmapping because it costs something. Uh, basically, it's done that for bi for for bigger uh, for processes with uh, more resident memory, it's done fa it's done faster than for smaller. But you can also 